We thought we'd go to some other folks. Sarah Nelson is the international president of, and this is relevant, the Association of Flight Attendants, which is with the AFL-CIO. Um, are you scared you're going to lose all your jobs because there will be no planes? <laughs> So yes, I'm Sarah Nelson, president of the Association of Flight Attendants, representing flight attendants at 20 different airlines across the country. And what my members are being told is that the Green New Deal means that all the planes are going to be on the ground in 10 years, never mind the fact that we still have to get around. Um, so what we're really experiencing is that every single day there's an increase of turbulence incidents because of this, these extreme weather patterns. And this is a major, very serious occupational threat to us. Ah. So we also know that when these extreme weather situations happen, the airplanes stay on the ground today. If this continues, our airplanes are going to stay on the ground more and more and more. This is going to threaten our jobs. And by the way, our members are also in those communities that are getting hurt by these uh, natural disasters that are taking place. So we have to really define for people what's at stake here and then bring them along. And the other thing that um, is important to do is, and recognize is that you know industry would like to have us believe that this is all about keeping airplanes on the ground. They don't want us to read the part about good unions jobs at right. a prevailing yeah. wage. That's right. yeah. They That's don't want right. us to read that part. So, and, and so this is, this is really important because, Congresswoman, I'd like to thank you for uh, zoning in on the mine workers' pensions because the mine workers are at ground zero of this. Now, these are the people who went underground, risked their lives, uh, have to deal with black lung today, mm -hmm. and um, who are, are dying because of that. So they could power this uh, country, so that they could help us innovate, so that they could warm the hospitals where we were born, right? And they were promised that if they did that, they would have pensions and they would have health care into the mm -hmm. future. That was a promise our government made, not just the companies. So if we're going to keep our promises to people and we're going to tell them, hey, we're going to talk about a new way of doing business here, and, and they, when they hear just transition, what they hear is a couple hours of training and then you leave the community right. devastated, mm -hmm. right? We have to make good on the promises that America has failed to make good on so far. So we have to protect those pensions, get those in place right away, if we want to have a little bit of faith in these people to join the conversation. Yeah. The, 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 part, of the, part, of the, part of the issue that she brings up is, is, this, is this point of like whether people have faith that they, the promises will be kept, right? Yeah. When you say like job training, it's like, mm -hmm. oh, job training. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. part of the project that you're engaged in is trying to restore that faith because otherwise no one's going to go for it. Absolutely. And I think that that's why so many of these issues are connected. First of all, I would like to thank um, Sarah for your role in helping end the government shutdown along with flight attendants across the country. I think that that kind of action is a blueprint hmm. for this exact concern. And that's why I say that this is not about appealing to my colleagues. It's about appealing to you and appealing to the entirety of the American people. Because we like to think that the wheeling and the dealing and the closing and the deals behind closed doors are what is going to lead us to the future. But it is the actual, you know, rubber to the road political pressure and popular organizing by everyday Americans coming together to create the political pressure to say, we need a plan by 2020. And when you start voting on your presidential candidates based on that, and when you start voting period when we weren't voting before, you know, it, it completely changes the entire dynamic of the country. And so that's where I think that that political pressure to keep our promises comes from. Because yeah. as a party, we got to show up, and I understand why we don't. There is this false idea that people don't vote because they're uneducated or because we're apathetic or what have you, but not voting is a choice. We choose not to do it because we have become so cynical about the system that has not been working for us. And so it creates a chicken and egg situation. But right now, we all need to just mobilize. And voting isn't everything. I'm, I'm, I'll be the first person to tell you that, is that if all you do is cast a vote every few years, we're not gonna get out of this mess. But we need to start there. We need to start there. And we need to at least cast our vote so we can have the political power that we deserve and that it, that's how we actually get represented here as a yep. country.